Okay, Joe Biden is speaking live about the coronavirus. Here's some steady All leadership right. at a time. My fellow Americans, today, across the nation, many of us are feeling anxious about the spread of the COVID-19, known as the coronavirus. And the threat it poses to our health, our loved ones, our families, our livelihoods. You know, I, I know people are worried. They're, my thoughts are with those who are directly fighting this virus. Those infected, families that have suffered a loss, first responders and healthcare providers are putting themselves on the line as I speak for others. I'd like to thank uh, those who are already making sacrifices to protect us, whether that's self-quarantine, self-quarantining themselves or canceling events and closing campuses. Because whether or not you're affected or know someone who is infected, or have been in contact with an infected person. This is going to require a national, a national response, not just from our elected leaders or our public health officials, but from all of us. We must, all of us, follow the guidelines of the health officials and take appropriate protections to protect ourselves and, and critically, to protect others, especially those who are most at risk for this disease. It's going to mean making some radical changes in our personal behaviors more frequent and more thorough hand washing, staying home from work if you're ill, but also altering the deeply ingrained habits in our country like handshakes and hugs. So this Avoiding is personal responsibility. Yeah, this personal responsibility. That's shit. why earlier this week, on the recommendation of officials, make demands, you old asshole. Election night rallies that we had planned to hold in Cleveland, Ohio. We're also reimagining the format of our for debate. Large crowd events we had planned in Chicago and Miami in the coming days. And we'll continue to assess and adjust how we conduct our campaign as we move forward and find new ways to share our message with the public. Oh, I can't wait for that. Health and safety Where's the policy? People first. No, he's talking like else. Ben Carson. Yesterday, we announced a public health advisory committee of experts who will continue to counsel my campaign and me, help guide our decisions <laughs> so on funny. the steps to minimize further risks. But we also yeah, you better have people around you washing your hands. Science. So. Policy demands, Joe. The World Health Organization now has officially, officially declared COVID-19 a pandemic. Downplaying this it, is just news. being we overly dismissive, or spreading misinformation is only going to hurt us and further advantage the spread of the disease. But neither should we panic or fall back on xenophobia. Labeling COVID-19 a foreign virus does not displace accountability for the misjudgments that have been taken thus far by the Trump administration. Let me be crystal clear. Please do. The coronavirus does not have a political affiliation. <laughs> it affects Republicans, independents, and Democrats alike. Coronavirus, it get it, everybody. It discriminate based on national origin, race, gender, or zip code. Pause it. it will touch people in or positions of power, as well as the most vulnerable in our society. And it will not stop. Banning all travel from Europe or any other part of the world may slow it, but as we've seen, it will not stop it. And travel restrictions based on favoritism and politics rather than risk will be counterproductive. This disease could impact every nation and any person on the planet. We need a plan about how we're going to aggressively manage here at home. You know, you Jesus all do know Christ. the American people have the capacity to meet this moment. All right, all right, all right. I can't oh, think of anything. He's not saying anything. So, no, 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 he is saying something. So let's just be really clear about our political choices here. Donald Trump will weaponize this with crony capitalism, and he will turn it into his MAGA xenophobia. Mm. Joe Biden will say it's will, bad he's doing will that. Will say it's bad he's doing that. And again, I want to keep registering. You know what? The two choices you have in the world are between a guy who will take a global pandemic to reinforce uh, xenophobia and someone who will politely say you shouldn't. I'll take the politely say you shouldn't. What we actually need is the third person that all of these, you know, a bunch of idiots couldn't just support and so on, who just has anything resembling a plan to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, Campaign people, why didn't Bernie do this? Bernie should do a COVID-9 address. No, I mean, it, it goes back to like 
the shock doctrine, like what Naomi Klein was talking about, how the right and the forces of capital will use a disaster to further their own ends, even and especially when those ends cause more disasters, which, as we know, are not merely natural. They're man-made. Um, it's up to the left to use these disasters as an opening to implement socialist policies, which will actually mitigate these disasters going forward. And Biden's never, ever going to do that. It's like the right is using it and he's just he's saying they're bad and he's not providing an alternative. All right. Uh, all right. You're calling from an eight four.